it is uh, my joy uh, to be here to uh, bring the uh, last uh, sermon, of course, uh, before the watch night, to all of you. I thank God that the Lord has uh, guided and blessed my pastoral ministry. It's coming to almost uh, 20 years. And I want to thank you all for your support, prayer, and also the participation in all that uh, Harold has because uh, the Lord um, has guided us here and our church is one that we believe and we uh, practice uh, the Word of God. We um, invite our friends and we do evangelism. We uh, ask them to come. It is their free will led by the Lord to be members of the church and to come for worship. There is uh, no compelling, there is no using other means uh, to draw people into the church, but it is to know God. And this has been my calling. And to uh, be a pastor here is uh, a privilege, a calling that I pray will enable each one of you to know, grow, and serve the Lord. So we have come to the last day of uh, 2023 and I uh, believe that it is uh, very momentous because uh, there are many things are uh, happening in the world and we see events like for example the COVID-19 con <coughs> con <coughs> contention is still looming but it's an uh, effect Amal. Thank God for that. You also know that Ukraine Russian two year war still persists, raising higher petrol price and uh, food price worldwide. And of course, the very tense and something that also affects us because the Bible tells us watch Jerusalem if the fig tree is blooming with leaves you know that summer is coming and that is also a sign of Christ coming so the uh, Israel and Hamas war started on the 7th of October and is still ongoing so we truly come to understand that we need to walk in the Lord we need to grow and serve but uh, perhaps it is good to ask this question. How do we fare in our Christian life in the midst of these tensions? So in the final day of, well, 2023, how are you? Are you sulky? Uh, perhaps uh, more problems than any other year? Uh, and you don't feel that it is uh, something to go on or next year will not be so bright or are you exuberant very happy because well you got your you know repacket your bonus things are getting very well and uh, those that have been baptized you know you look forward and tonight for those uh, who have received uh, their membership well, welcome to our uh, Lord's Supper. And of course, uh, many will say, Well, trust the Lord, we will continue to grow. Well, I must say that as a pastor, <clears throat> I'm, no, I, I'm uh, 17 years old, the other way. I feel that there is still a lot of energy. I feel the Lord's calling is still there. Because I become a pastor, because the Lord said, I want you to be a pastor, I'll give you peace, wisdom, and all that you need. And if I were to stop being a pastor, I don't know whether the Lord still wants me here. So it's quite dangerous in a sense. <laughs> so it's hard to serve and the mind to know God's will and also, well, the uh, enthusiasm to ensure that people know the Lord and our, our own members grow. And you know, as a pastor, sometimes I feel very much because uh, a pastor is one who takes care of the sheep. 
And if one sheep is lost or a few don't come, his heart is affected because I have to pray for them. And some of them I pray for maybe 50 years and still not back yet. And yet still I say, why should I pray? And, and those that have uh, served before in the uh, two other churches whom the Lord has uh, me as their pastor, well, I still remember them. So it's not so easy to be a pastor because you have a lot of weights. A pastor on the same behalf can have the sense of death because someone suddenly died. And he also feels heart attack because someone has heart pain and go to hospital. And then sometimes uh, rejoicing because a baby is born. And, and marriages. Well, this year I've conducted more than 12 marriages. And uh, praise the Lord. Everyone must know Jesus for the first counselling. And then uh, in the sermon, it's always about the uh, marriage according to the Bible's principles. So I'm uh, very exuberant. And how about you? Or maybe if you're a doll. <laughs> well, I think it's the same. We go back to school in a few days' time and have to start working. And uh, the company has so high goals. You know, and the uh, academic uh, people have uh, more things and harder things to research into and higher goals, higher, well, achievements. Maybe it may be very, very few, very dull. However, whatever you feel, we must be close to the Lord. So how is your walk? We haven't passed this year with the Lord. Do you seek God's kingdom more or the kingdom more? Has our faith grown in the walk with our master? And I'm very, very concerned because uh, in all these years of service, some would say, Pastor, I want to go to another church because I don't seem to grow. Well, that is very personal and uh, emotional because uh, after you know leading them to the different you know uh, periods of the age they say they want to leave the church of course other members say okay that's good but as a pastor what if everyone were to say this then i have only my family to worship the lord <laughs> there, there, there are things that are happening and also within this uh, 10 to 11 years, uh, three churches have shut their doors because of <clears throat> either the congregation become very small or a lot of problems. And some of course, some churches will join other churches. Uh, the members are sent to other churches. So how's your faith? And I want to make sure that uh, this is uh, something that is growing. Then. How much of the Bible ESV have you completed in the last 364 days? Well, I believe uh, our office has been very faithful. Sometimes uh, by four, five o'clock, well, the reading is out. Sometimes uh, a bit late, you know, uh, maybe at eight. But that's, that's not late too. Other times, like uh, two days have been missing. And uh, because uh, this has been going on, and, and yet we have this whole year of uh, listening to the Word of God, and how much have you done? So if I were to ask for hands, maybe quite embarrassing. Well, maybe not. And the thing is, before we had Bible reading, and first year, well, a few said they've completed, we gave them a gift. You know, so very good. Second year, we did also the same. In the same couple also said they have read the Bible twice. Then I said, okay, we give, we give out. And third year, the same couple also they have completed. <laughs> so actually, Bible reading is your relationship with God. And you make it as a goal to receive a prize, then we are just reading for reading's sake. And so that's why we have left this to your own choosing. And we don't question you and at times of course we, I have members come and say oh I read through the Bible praise the Lord so it is something to encourage us and the reward is from the Lord 
So you have read through the 66 books in ESV. Praise the Lord. But you read half. Well, it doesn't matter. We will still go on to uh, read the Bible. But next, next year, tomorrow, we will start with Daily Manor. And we will follow this. You can complete the Bible reading with the devotional notes um, throughout the Bible uh, in two years. So this will be given out every quarter. So we want to have a different way of reading the Bible, but it is feeding. It is uh, eating your rice every day. But if you don't eat for a few days, you'll be hungry, right? How about spiritually? Well, then you may not even know that you have uh, not been walking close to the Lord because uh, you have not heard His Word or read His Word. So reading of the Bible. So how much we can always continue next year, but be faithful. Then also, we ask ourselves, is our relationship with our loved ones better, stronger and sweeter? As we walk closer to the Lord, our relationship with our spouse must be sweeter and better and more tender or tender. But if it's the opposite, you may be doing very good work in the church and yet your relationship with your spouse and your children may not be so good then there will be repercussions that may not be a good testimony for the Lord however, if you can be consistent in all praise to the Lord because we are to be witnesses in the world so this year's theme is let your light shine before others we have been doing that praise the Lord so how about next year since you have shine out well then you must go and make disciples go make disciples will be our next year's theme so let's uh, as one in Christ brothers and sisters as a church we bring people to the kingdom and we want to disciple them so that will be our theme next year so today I thought it would be good to be wise and uh, the uh, verse comes from Colossians chapter 4 verse 5 walk in wisdom toward them that are without redeeming the time we have to focus on this. The background of uh, Colossians is the um, teaching the uh, Colossians about Christ as the one who holds the universe as uh, the Savior and also one that must be together and facing the world. So we want to consider this uh, uh, today. Walk in wisdom toward them that are without and that will be those who are outside the Christian community those who are outside the church those who have not been saved redeeming the time it is important uh, for the Christian life so what does it mean by redeem the time well first of all the time is evil time is your life on earth we know that this uh, can be a clock uh, it counts uh, whatever is going on it goes on and it's evil in a sense that it is troublesome on, when you are on earth it's trouble the first birth is a cry the first birth is the labor pain and we go on and so Paul as apostle to the uh, Gentiles said that time is evil in efficiency why? Because we know that trouble grows all the time. We find that uh, the wars in the world, in the first century, there were hundreds of uh, uh, war. Uh, but as we go on, there are thousands of wars. And today, there are 40, 50 uh, wars, even you know, today, everywhere. And we know the bigger ones have, I've just uh, mentioned and also our trouble, our life, every breath we take is uh, an effort. Of course, you are well, you don't realize that. But when you, those who are sick, 
you know that every breath counts. And we know that spiritually, the evil work of the devil grows more and more and more. So we must redeem the time because if you don't, then trouble will take after you. Sickness will come and you'll be stumbled and you'll get up and then you'll find the world is sometimes against you. So as a Christian, you must redeem the time. Younger ones feel that there's always a lot of time left. So that's interesting that, um, well, when we are young, we look forward to our birthdays because of a celebration. When you're older, uh, you don't really want to look forward to your birthday because it gets shorter and shorter. <laughs> Older ones, of course, you know, the time is running out. So how do we as Christians look at time as we grow older? If we look for the dark part of uh, the grave, then we'll be very, very sad. But we look just behind the grave, that's heaven, then it'll be very bright. I am ready to meet the Lord. So meaning that if our time is with the Lord doing His work, we will be like servants waiting for the master with the talents uh, multiplied. Say, I'm waiting for my master to present these to him. And that's exciting. So, as we grow older, we must be closer to the Lord. And trouble is at the door. Well, that's uh, evil. Un uncertain of what will happen next. So we can understand that Anything can happen even though we are Christians. Anything can happen even we pray. So we know that some people go to church and accident takes place. So many say, wow, like this. Huh? Of course, other thinking is all kinds of expression. Why go to church if this happens? Well, we understand that the Lord wants a person to meet with Him in the real presence but those who go to church will have the spiritual presence but those who meet with, with uh, the Lord in the cessation of the body is indeed the best thing because Paul said I would prefer to be in spirit that's with the Lord than to be in physical form because he knows all the trouble so we need to trust the Lord because we are not sure of what will come next. Then we see time can be stolen, shortened and shifted to any direction. So walk in wisdom in the Lord can mean, well, now we go to this part here, be wise means walk in wisdom. Wisdom um, in the Lord yeah, can mean to live according to how God made us to live. We believe in God who has molded us and leading us and to the end to fulfill his goal. Like Jeremiah, he did not know that God called him until he was screaming out, why is this happening to me? And then the Lord revealed that I have formed you even in the womb. And now I'm using you to do the great work of the kingdom. So when I became a Christian, I was, uh, well, persecuted. I do not know how, um, but my parents were angry with me and rejected me. But I trusted the Lord. And someone said, how do you ever go get through that? So I said to, to them, when my father insulted me or say all kinds of things, I go to my room, I go to the balcony, there I kneel down and I pray to the Lord. And then I'm happy. I come out and say, hi, Dad. So that's how I, well, overcame. Because God has given me that kind of situation. He has made me to live that way. And then the second kind of thing that happened was, I was attacked by the evil one. I did not know why I would hear sounds sometimes of the temple and then my Bible was like sounds got put under my, my, my pillow and then other times I would choke when I was sleeping and I called on the Lord's name I, one time I was praying and I felt as if I was uh, dead I could not move 
And then I saw some very bright thing in front of me. And I called Jesus' name five times. And I got up. I was okay. And I realized the power of Christ's name. So that was what he made me to go through. And for all these years, as a Christian, as a pastor, very seldom I hear people going through that. But God has made me to have that. And some who have that means there's a purpose in your life. Very clearly, God wants you to do something for Him. Well, so there's walking in wisdom to know that these are not negatives, but there are positive things for us. That to be joyful in obedience to His Word. So even though this is against a principle um, of uh, what it is, you know, and there I serve God by His joy. And that is wisdom. To be delighted in fulfilling His commandment of love. And so we do things that may be very, very awkward, awful. People don't understand. Why do you, well, help a person who is no use? Why do you, you know, keep on supporting him? Well, that is the commandment of love. Sometimes there's no reason. If there's reason, then we will not do such things as Christians. To praise uh, our Lord, to give praise of His glory in all things. Can we do that? Well, we pray that um, this verse will challenge us. But let's look at the opposite. Opposite to walk in wisdom. There are two examples in the Bible. <clears throat> One is in the book of Judges. We know that there were at least 12 judges. Their work and what uh, they said recorded. And there at the end, this author, we believe uh, it could be Samuel or maybe um, successor of uh, Joshua. It ended with Every person did that which was right in his own eyes. Isn't what this is today? We have been given that um, ability to rationalize, to create, innovate, and then we become ourselves, every one of us. You know, it's different from another. Not in, in those days, you know, one class, because there's no knowledge, you say yes, everybody says yes. You say no, everybody says no. But today, you say, is it yes or no? The response is so different. And so everyone, you know, would do their own things. But in, in the book of Judges, everyone I think, was right in his own eyes. So I think this is a very sad situation. And in the church, we pray all of us were one mind in Christ. All of us were one thought that is... Uh, well, according to the Bible, the thought will be very wide, you know, in doctrine, in practice and all. And then we will serve one Lord and Master. And then the second example of what is opposite to wisdom is the preacher. Well, many believe your Solomon, who wrote the book of Ecclesiastes, uh, shared his many regrets at OH that everything he pursued ended in vanity. Because it's not vanity of vanities all... It's vanity, it's uh, wealth. At the end, was ashes. His uh, possessions of uh, uh, building palaces and, and big, huge buildings, and also the gardens that he had established, they were also vanity. His uh, knowledge of insects, of birds, of, uh, the, of nature, well, he said is very tiring and also the knowledge of how to live. He said it's all vanity. Anything under the sun is vanity. And finally, OH came regrets. Regrets and more regrets. But this good book, sad book, the preacher in the last year he said, urged the youth to remember God when they are robust and strong. And for the rest, he told them to fear God and keep God's commandments. This is the opposite. And we must walk in wisdom and a testimony to all those who are outside the church and his kingdom. So how to walk in wisdom? Redeem the time. Time is life. 
So time is always there, but you are in the segment of eternity. At that time, okay, let's redeem it. So, redeem means two things well, very, very meaningfully. So the uh, word uh, redeem is actually a market word, means uh, idiomatic uh, expression, buying up the opportunities. It is uh, what has been sold, you know, is to buy back. Or what has been taken away, like uh, being kidnapped. So you buy back, you pay the ransom. So the buyback means that what has been bought back will be very, very precious. So it also means take advantage of all occasions for doing good. So why within the time? Don't bother me. This is my time. You have your own time. You do yours. But the church, the Bible says the time we have belongs to God. And God will take account of what we do in this life. Whether it is uh, 30, 40, or 70, or 100, or plus. It is God's time. Because the time will come when the world will face judgment. We don't like to hear that. The world doesn't like to hear that. So therefore, any journalist who mentioned God in their writing will be cancelled out. And then they talk about spiritual will be cancelled out. So the whole newspaper is actually secular materialism. It is uh, bad news most of the time. The only good news is someone struck the bogus, you know, sheep in USA. One billion dollars. <laughs> That's a good news. Huh? Where does the name God men is mentioned in the newspaper? Is God being mentioned? Do you know where? I asked this question before. Is God found in the Bible? Yes. Is God found in newspapers today? Yes. In the obituary. Huh? Yeah, obituary because they want God to be uh, with them. Of course, those who believe they put the Bible verses, you know. So, the time is what we have. The reason for redeeming the time is of twofold. One is our test me for the people's sake. So we must understand that Paul is very concerned that Christians are safe for the kingdom's sake. It is safe that they go and share the gospel that Jesus died for their sins and rose again from the dead. So that lost souls will be born in the kingdom. So our life is to be a testimony for the word and for our God. And then also redeem the time because trouble is always there. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 16. So that we don't need to, to say that. So meaning that before anything happens, I do what is good. So many want to leave a legacy in this world here. So some write books. That's good. But there are some and I believe you must build people's life. Because if you build people's life in Christ, they will remember that they are born again, their lives have changed, transformed. And now they are, well, worshipping, serving God. And serving God means to help the poor and going out to do mission work and establish this church. And then this uh, gospel goes on to turn sinners into saints. So we see that. This is very important for us to know. But how to redeem the time? Well, read the Bible. Review the year's events and revive our zeal for the Lord. So very quickly, you see, first is give more quality time, quality time to study the Word of God. You have heard the chronological Bible 364 days so now give more time to study may sometimes you study a verse of course preaching here we are telling you that verse or the passage or the chapter it has a, this meaning and apply to our lives you see the world has so many you know good books how to 
basically you go to blinkers it is how to improve your temperament how to have uh, a rest and how to make money how to be a millionaire right away and how to multiply your millions so someone said you know I want to make my second million why because I didn't make the first so I make the second <laughs> actually yeah, it's just a word only you see so we know that the world gives you nothing but how to be rich, how to have pleasure, leisure, and how to expand your emotions, your sensitivity, your sexuality to the highest. And there's no God. Of course, you can come back to God and put all this aside. Read the Bible. It will cleanse your mind, it will purify your emotions, and it will help you to do the right thing for God. And meditate on how lessons of God's word can be applied to our daily lives so it is important to every day say what does God want me to do the passage and if uh, you say this passage doesn't mean anything but I tell you every verse in the Bible has thousands and thousands of explanations because for these 2,000 years scholars theologians uh, learned people have looked at a verse and every verse in the Bible and so it can be so it means that we want to be diligent to see how this can become a lesson for today and I pray over our reading of the Bible so if you say oh I'm going to pray then take the psalm well the psalm uh, especially uh, let's say the verse um, of uh, saying um, he delight of the Lord you know day and night uh, the Lord's word day and night meditate day and night so you know pray over it Lord help me to meditate the word of God day and night or it is uh, something that uh, comes out like um, for example Judas went to hang himself how to pray say God help those who want to commit suicide not to commit suicide or you have that kind of feeling, Lord, Lord, take this away because it's not right. Okay, so that's how you pray over God's word. Then secondly, is review the year's events. So there is a need to revisit your trials and triumphs. So all these days you have your trials and triumphs. And also, let's talk about um, the, the flu. I had at least uh, three or four times of flu. And each time I say, okay, I'm doing better, but I still get sick. You know? Mm. So, I learned I must sleep at least five hours a day for me. You know? Because uh, sometimes uh, I work through, and then the next thing I have sore throat. And, next, and then that will bring in my flu and all the other uh, sicknesses. So, I, I, I learned. And also, uh, whenever um, I read, I fall asleep. So before I read, I fall asleep. I still try to read, but I came to a solution. When I feel tired, I go and sleep. Then when I wake up, I read again. So, so that change is very important, see? So go through your trials and your triumphs in the Lord, how you can overcome, how can you strengthen those areas of your life that need to be done. Retract our broken promises and unfeeling words made to some friends and family members. Well, well, we have made a lot of promises, you know. Okay, I'll come early. But then we are late. And the promises of like coming to church is only, you know, 9.35. Then it's uh, three quarter field. And then 9.40. Then most of them are here. So we need to say, okay, let me try to, you know, remake these, this thing. Uh, so as a pastor, I share this with you, you know, because uh, today we, we know that uh, Deacon Cain waited a while, right? Uh, 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 yeah, uh, a, a bit more, some five minutes. Of course, today it's raining, so uh, excuses are acceptable. Huh? Mm. And then, of course, some promises uh, we make yeah, to to our family members, our friends, if not right, okay, let's uh, make it because it's important to be honest. And also our promise to God, if we have promised this and have not made it, let's not be what uh, Ecclesiastes uh, says, don't be a fool walking into the uh, temple to make promises and don't fully fulfill it. God knows. 
So that is between you and me, and we say, God, help me. Give me strength to fulfill this with you. And we'll be a better people, and the Lord will bless us even much more. Then also, revitalize our bonds with our loved ones. And this is very important because we get very tired of our partner every time, sometime. And never one time we are not tired because uh, we use the same language, we see the same same, same person. We, we don't see them grow old because you grow old, you know, our partner will grow old, so we don't see any difference. And it's very, sometimes say, what is so exciting about marriage? So that's why I say those who want to have their marriage uh, revitalized, come and see the counsellor. He is here 25 hours a day. <coughs> well, there's uh, the training, you see, the training that God has given to me. Uh, so, how do we, well, maybe help us ourselves with our language? Sometimes we must change our language. Sometimes we say, don't use the negative words. Don't use the commanding words. You do this, you do that. I don't like this, I don't like Change to something positive. It's difficult, but I can try. And that will help. And th that's what the Bible always tells us. You know, we must be uh, renewed. So renew also in the way we look at each other. You know? So some don't look at, some people only look at the triangular thing, you know, your handphone more times than looking at your loved ones. You talk, also look at, you eat, you look down. So actually, uh, in time, if evolution is true, uh, all your faces will be like that. You know, you know, but I don't believe in evolution. You know? I believe that there are changes, uh, and you can be changed for good and bad. But in Christ, we can revitalize our relationship, and our emotions can be also transformed for better. So remember the time when you fall in love with the one you say you want to marry? It was exciting, right? Go back to that time. And sometimes it's so difficult because there are so many obstacles. Huh? You know, the happy time becomes so well, so deep in and it will come out very difficult. But pray that this will happen. Even your, your, your friends, you know, your very good friends, you must renew because of the Lord. <clears throat> so we know that some good friends, even for decades, you know, can be broken by just one wrong word, by a broken promise, by maybe saying something of that person. And that's why as we grow older, we have lesser friends. But that's not true. As you grow older, you have more friends because we have Christ's love. So you should also love your enemies, you see. Okay, so revitalize. So then after this, we have a final one. There's revive our zeal for the Lord. I go through this very quickly. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 6, verse 24 says, You cannot have two masters, or you hate the one or love the other, and will uh, be devoted to the one or despise the other. You can have two masters. So revive your relationship with your master and do not be slothful in zeal but be fervent in spirit serve the Lord so those who are serving the Lord increase your, your zeal and do better service for the Lord if you do a better service for the Lord then we will have a better service in our worship we have better facilities that, that we can help others to know Christ and so we thank God for the, the crew and uh, the PA crew behind are you all sleeping there? no that's, that's good because you're all hidden behind all, all the tablets and uh, monitors you see <laughs> yeah so your zeal for the Lord and praise the Lord that we have very good crew and very good sets of those who you know Made the flowers, you, you realize every, every time is different. So we have 52 sets. Yeah. Always uh, two, one downstairs and one here. So afternoon church receives two. You know, because they come at about uh, three o'clock. So they have two sets of flowers. We have only one. But it's beautiful. So we thank God for, you know, um, um, Sister Patsy uh, who arranges this and, and the others. Now, how to redeem time? 
Well, three, right? First, first is can you remember. Read the Bible. Second, review, review the year's events, and thirdly, revive our zeal for the Lord. And now to conclude, brothers, I do not consider that I have made it my own. But one thing I do, forgetting what, is, what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the price of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. So this is calling us to look forward to the time and be caught up. And that will be the reward because all those who have Christ will remain here and the great tribulation will oppress them. Now maybe tribulation, but a greater one, but then we will be caught up. That is the price. So God must reward us. God must add to what we do and grant us His peace and joy. If we were to have a gift for all those that read through the Bible, that's your gift. But it doesn't last. However, if God gives, it, gives you and each one of you and us that gift, it will be everlasting. So look for that gift and do what we can so that 2024 will be a wonderful year. Better, stronger and more spiritual with His power. So the Lord will promote us to a higher ground, strengthen us to greater tasks and bless us. And finally, trust the Lord as we walk, walk closer with Him in wisdom. Surely He will lift us up to a higher ground and He will strengthen and bless us. Let's pray. Bless your word. Enable us to walk in wisdom for those who are outside the church, outside your kingdom. For the sake of the destiny, grant your strength, your blessings, and fill us that we will always walk in the Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.